Costello program, brought to you by Camel, the cigarette of costlier, properly aged tobaccos. Listen to the rhythm of Alan Roth and his orchestra, the great song styles of Connie Haynes and Bob Matthews, and that chubby, chunky little comedian who, when asked to carry his own trunk to the Roxy Theater for his personal appearance next week, quickly cried... Costello, I'm glad to see that you got here safely from California. You know, I didn't see you on the train. Where were you? Abbott, I was riding in a private car. You you came from Hollywood to New York in a private car? Yeah, me and 200 privates. <laughs> you dummy, didn't you have any place to sleep on the train? Oh, sorry, I had a bedroom on the end of the smoker. Costello, there's no bedroom on the smoker. That's the washroom. I wondered why I had six sinks. <laughs> Costello, you're stupid, it's so... It's the one you got here at all. Look, did anybody meet you at the station? Oh, yeah, my favorite cousin was there to meet me. Cuspidor Costello. Cuspidor? Yeah. Why do they ever name him Cuspidor? Because he's a spitting image of his father. I... <laughs> Come on, will you, ladies? All will right, you, all right. <laughs> Never mind your cousin, Costello. Did you see anybody important at the station? Oh, yeah, I saw Mayor LaGuardia standing in line at the ticket window with two policemen. LaGuardia was standing in line at the ticket window and with two policemen? Were they... Where were they going? The policemen weren't going anywhere. <laughs> they just come along to lift LaGuardia up to the ticket window. I... <laughs> Costello. He's cute, LaGuardia. Yes, yes, indeed he is. Costello, I understand Mayor LaGuardia is a very good friend of yours. Oh, yeah, we're pals. I call him the little flower, and he calls me the big stinkweed. Big stinkweed. <laughs> Costello, if you're so intimate with Mayor LaGuardia, tell me, why does he wear that big hat? He has to wear that big hat, Abbott. Why? Under it, he's got his own fire engine. Oh. <laughs> Costello, I don't believe you even know Mayor LaGuardia. Uh, come in. Ah, good evening, gentlemen. I have a personal message from the mayor for Mr. Lou Costello. Oh, did you hear that, Abbott? Mister, I am Lou Costello. The mayor has asked me to tell you that he is very, very, very happy that you are here in New York. Give my thanks to the mayor of New York. The mayor of New York? I represent the mayor of Los Angeles. (laughs) Go get your check, brother. You're through. Costello, you're getting dumber every day. I'd give $25 to find out what school you went to. I can't take it, Abbott. Why not? The school gave me $50 to keep my mouth shut. <laughs> look, look, Costello, I understand that you're staying at the St. Moritz Hotel. And I hope you're happy behaving yourself. Oh, I am. I only had one party since I got in yesterday. Some of my old gang from Patterson visited me last night. They did? Yeah, 75 of us sat around my room lapping up Seth and singing songs. And at four o'clock in the morning, the house detective had the nerve to knock on my door. Did he tell you you were making too much noise? No, all he said was, Costello, we'll be glad when you leave and the American Legion Convention starts. <laughs> you idiot. Well, while you're here, why, why don't you visit the top of the Empire State Building? It overlooks all of New York. Now, for a dollar, you can see five burrs. For a dollar, I can see what? Five burrs. Why should I pay a dollar to look at a bunch of jackasses? No, no. <laughs> I go to your house and look at a No, 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 no. Yeah. I'm talking about the five boroughs of New York. And the whole city is built on those five boroughs. The whole city is built on top of five boroughs? Certainly. Shame on the people of New York. Shame on the people of mean? New York. For what? Putting all those big buildings on top of them five little donkeys. No, no, no. Don't put the rocks on top of them. No, 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 no. Forget about the boroughs. Tell me, uh, have you been to the automat? I beg your pardon? Have you been to the Automat? Yes, I was there. That's a very dangerous restaurant. Well, what's dangerous about the Automat? I was eating a piece of pie, and that little door came down and hit me on the head. <laughs> you idiot, you're supposed to Come take... on, will you, lady? Oh, look. <laughs> Don't you understand? You're supposed to take the pie out of that little door and eat it at the table. Now, he tells me. <laughs> you know what the Automat is famous for? Their coffee. I know that. I put a nickel in the slot, and out came a cup of coffee. Then I put another nickel in the slot, and out came another cup of coffee. I put another nickel in, and out came another cup of coffee. Another nickel, another cup of coffee. Another nickel, another minute. cup of coffee. Wait then I had more wait coffee. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Nickel. I kept putting nickels in. Wait I a minute, minute. wait a minute, Costello. Why didn't you stop putting in nickels? Why should I quit when I'm on a winning streak? Get him out of here. Coast 
Coast Guard. Yes, Army, Navy, Marines, Coast Guard, wherever they go in their winning of the war, they have first call on camels. Billions and billions of camels traveling to thousands and thousands of places on the globe to give our fighting men the cigarettes they want. So when you can't get camels every time you want them, here's what's happening. You are sharing your smokes with the men who are doing our fighting. But when you do get camels, they're still camels, rich and full to your taste, cool and mild to your throat. Ask for them every time you buy cigarettes. C-A-M-E-L-S Camels, war or peace, still a cigarette of costlier tobaccos. And now here's that romantic Bob Matthews with Alan Roth and the orchestra. Bob sings our camel audience the song, A Friend of Yours. Just say that I'm a friend of yours, and I'm sure that they won't get one. You know, I spent my childhood here. Oh, it seems like only yesterday that I was just a little boy. Yes, it seems like the day before yesterday that Washington crossed the Delaware. I am. Costello, I'm very proud of the fact that I come from Brooklyn. Tell me something. Why is it so many people come from Brooklyn and nobody ever goes there? (laughs) Shame on you, Costello, to think that you would make an unkind remark about Brooklyn. What's gotten into you? I don't know, Abbott. I got it just no good. I'm nothing but a bounder. I know it. I'm worse than a bounder. I know it. I'm a pop fly to the third baseman. I'll say you are. I, I should have said nothing about Brooklyn. After all, they're one of our allies. Hey, look, <laughs> never mind that. Brooklyn has one of the most popular resorts in the world. Coney Island. I went to Coney Island yesterday. You did? Yeah. How did you get there? I followed a couple of sailors. I, you, <laughs> you followed a couple of sailors? Yeah, the sailors and their girlfriends went down in the tunnel of love at 42nd Street and Broadway. I, yeah, dummy, that's a subway. <laughs> that's not the tunnel of love. How long have you been in town? Hey, uh, look. <laughs> Costello, why don't you grow up? Nothing hit you, hey, lady? All right. <laughs> While you're in New York, uh, Lou, have some fun. Go to a nightclub. Oh, I went to one last night, Abbott. And I'm going back again to Copacabana. It's wonderful. It's wonderful. Yes? Hey, Abbott, they got a beautiful girl there. Copacabana? Yeah, she re- she wears real short dresses. They come right up to the table when you- where you're sitting. She, she, she does? <laughs> yeah, and brother, she sells the best popcorn you ever taste. Ah, uh, Costello, that's not a nightclub. Well, look, why don't you go to one of those uh, Latin nightclubs like uh, the El Chizo? Oh, I went to the El Chizo, and when they handed me the El Checo, I was El Broco. <laughs> Chino, and I landed out in the El Strito. Come in. I have a telegram for Luke Costello. Thank you, boy. Don't go away. I'm going to give you a nice tip. Have you got change for five? No, I haven't. All right, then. Keep the whole nickel. Right. <laughs> a nickel? Oh, thank goodness. 
now my wife can have another baby. Um. Well, go ahead. Costello, read the telegram. All right. Oh, boy. What do you mean? Mm, mm, mm. Oh, my goodness. Oh. All right, don't get excited. Well, take it easy. Wow! Wait, wait a minute. Well, what does the telegram say? I don't know. I'm looking at, at that girl in the first row. I like it. <laughs> Give me that. I'll read it. Give me it. Give it to me. Give me that telegram. You got hey, it. Hey, my. It's from the city of Patterson, New Jersey. It's from the citizen of Patterson. City of Patterson, New Jersey? Yes. I knew my hometown wouldn't forget me. <laughs> wait a minute. It says, uh, Dear Lou, the city of Patterson will, will be proud to honor you by holding a Lou Costello Day conjunction with the garbage disposal week. Now, ain't that swill? A swill? I'll bet they want to make a speech at the opening of the new dumps. But, Costello, you never made a speech in your life. You're right, Abbott. If I could only find somebody to learn me. Yeah, hey, wait a minute. I'm glad you said that, Costello, because we have with us tonight the world's greatest authority on public speaking. Ah, uh, good evening, gentlemen. I am Professor Melonhead. <clears throat> Better known in oratorical circles as Windy Melonhead. Windy Melonhead. From yep. the looks of your head, a cyclone must have struck yep. it. <laughs> Get a load of that shiny dome. I've seen more hair on a ball bearing. Now, what? Costello, are you insinuating that my head is completely stripped of hair? Stripped of hair? Melonhead, you've got more skin showing than Gypsy Rose Lee. <laughs> and it's shinier. All right, all right. I like my head this way, Costello. It gives the air a chance to get into my skull. Melonhead, I'd like to stick a pin in your skull and let the air out. Ah, now, Costello, <laughs> don't talk like that. The professor can't help it if he's bald and ugly. Well, he could stay home. <laughs> you don't have to go roaming around, does he? Costello, are you casting reflections on my head? Reflections? Melon head with that shining dome, you should be in a Coast Guard. With my head, what could I do in the Coast Guard? You could release a lighthouse for active duty. Well, uh, <laughs> Professor Melonhead, Costello is going to speak in Patterson. Do you think do you think that you can make a public speaker out of him? Abbott, I could make two public speakers out of him and have enough left over for a talking dog. <clears throat> now, Costello, the important thing in public speaking is the proper tone. There's the head tone, which is the up tone. Yes, sir. And there's the stomach tone, which is the down tone. Yes, sir. And then there's the chest tone, which is the cross tone. See? Yes, up tone, down tone, cross tone. <laughs> up tone, down tone, cross tone. That's an up tone. Uh, what's the matter? Are you ticklish? Only down tone. <laughs> yeah. Which, uh, which tone do you prefer? I don't know. I'll take a transfer. Professor, yes? do you think Castello is ready to make a speech? He will be when I finish with him. Costello, when you walk out of the rostrum to speak, remember to put on a big front. Put on a big front? How can I do that? In your case, walk out backwards. <clears throat> <laughs> now I'll show you, Costello, how to improve your speaking. First, I'll break down your timidity. I will hammer on your enunciation. I'll put fiery resonance into your declamatory proclivities. I'll inject precision into your participles. I'll clarify your consonants, correct your vowels, and then I will cut out your split infinitive. <laughs> you wouldn't dare. <laughs> you haven't got the nerve. Get him out of here. Why, no one Oh, 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 uh, 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 Lou, well, what are you doing with that gun? I, Lou, Lou, what's that for? I, Lou, what's happening? Abbott, there's somebody following us, and it looks awful mysterious to me. Yes, there's mystery following Abbott and Costello. There'll be mystery in the air next Thursday night at the same time and station. Mystery in the Air is the title of Camel's great new thrill-packed program being introduced while Bud Abbott and Lou Costello are taking their summer vacations. We're going to miss you two mugs. <laughs> on behalf of the gang here and our sponsors, may I toss a few assorted bouquets in your direction for the swell Camel shows you've done. Tell you how glad we'll all be to see you back again for Camel's this fall. In the meantime, we're going to do our best to keep you listeners right on the edges of your chairs with as potent a mixture of mystery, action, danger, suspense, laughs, and ice cubes up and down your spine as has ever been devised for your entertainment. Yes, you must meet our new hero, Stonewall Scott, ex-G2 secret agent, who returns to civilian life only to find that there are still enemies to fight. 
that there is still <laughs> mystery in the air. And remember, camels are worth asking for every time. See for yourself how camels' mildness, coolness, and flavor click with you. Lovely Connie Haynes on stage now to bring her camel fans a song they've asked to hear. With Alan Roth and the orchestra, Connie sings Sentimental Journey. Gonna take a sentimental journey Gonna set my heart at ease Gonna make a sentimental journey To renew old memories Got my bag, got my reservation any time I could afford Like a child in wild anticipation Long to hear that all aboard Seven, that's the time we leave at seven I'll be waiting on In a few minutes, we'll be leaving for Patterson. I'll yeah, good old New Jersey, the biggest state in the Union. Oh, no, Costello, you're wrong there. No. Texas is the biggest state in the Union. Why do you know that the state of Texas is bigger than Germany? Abbott, right now, anything is bigger than Germany. I... Come in. that you wish. That I have been sent here by the committee in charge of Patterson's Blue Costello Day in conjunction with Garbage Disposal Week. <laughs> I have come to prepare Mr. Costello for his part of the pageant. I am the coach. You're the what? I'm the coach. Coach, you look more like a late freight with a loose caboose. <laughs> Costello, you imbecile, this lady is a dramatic coach. Not the kind of a coach you see in a railroad station. Well, she ought to be in a railroad station. All right, never mind that. Now you shut up! Why should I be in a railroad station? Because the bags under your eyes hang down so far that your nose looks like a red cap. <laughs> now, 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 shut up, Costello. Madam, what does uh, Costello do in this garbage disposal pageant? Well, he represents the spirit of sanitation. Spirit. Sounds like a nice, clean pot. <laughs> well, of course, I have the leading role. I am the princess of water supply. She looks more like a rusty drain pipe. I am sure. I, in fact, I'm positive that Costello will uh, cooperate. Just uh, tell him what he has to do. Very well. Costello, as third sanitation... 
meditation, you are a knight in shining armor, preparing to launch Patterson's new self-dumping, germ-proof garbage scow. <laughs> yes, you are seated on the poop deck. <laughs> I am privileged to approach you and say, uh, hello, good night. Hello, good night. <laughs> what kind of talk is that? No, 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 dummy. When I say good night, I don't mean the kind of night like night in the salutation, good night. I mean the kind of night that has been nighted, and that night is as different from night as night is from day. Oh, when you say good night, you don't mean the kind of night like night in the salutation, good night. You mean the kind of night that has been nighted, and that night is different from night and night is from day. Now you've got it. Now I've got it. I don't even know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Yeah, and I continued it. I didn't even see it here. Excuse me. <laughs> hey, Abbott, is this dame your sister? Oh, certainly not, Costello. Uh, uh, continue, madam. Uh, very well. Where were we? I don't know. Someplace on the table. Well, you had me sitting on the poop deck on a garbage scow. Oh, yes, yes. Now, as a spirit sanitation, you take this big squirt gun and you read this speech to the germ. Here, read it. Okay. Listen unto me, you microbes, big and small. I'm the spirit of sanitation, and I hate you all. I'll bump off all you germs and bugs and keep Patterson clean, even if I have to squirt out every drop of my chlorine. <laughs> oh, that's fine. We'll expect you and Patterson within the hour. Good night. Good night. Oh, get that kid out of here, will you? <laughs> Hey, Abbott, look at all the mob that turned out to welcome me back to Patterson. Isn't it wonderful? Look, Pat there's my old school teacher, Miss Blackboard. Uh, do you think she'll remember you? She should. Many's the time I slapped her erasers. I... Oh, Miss Blackboard. Well, what do you want? Don't you remember me, little Lou Costello? I used to stand up in the back of the room and raise my hand. Well, you can go now. <laughs> Now she tells me. <laughs> Your friends sure remember you, Costello. Oh, yeah. Why, there's Mr. Hackett over there. I'll bet he remembers me. I used to mow his lawn every Saturday, and his grandmother used to sit on the backyard and watch me. Oh, Mr. Hackett! Aha, uh -huh. there you are, Costello. Why didn't you mow my lawn last Saturday? I haven't mowed your lawn in 15 years. Oh, no wonder we can't find Grandma. <laughs> Say, Costello. Who is that tough-looking kid sitting on that picket fence? He's waving to you. Oh, that stinky, dinky Shields. He was the toughest kid in our gang. Yeah? That's our old hangout over there. No way. Us guys used to sit on that picket fence for hours. Oh, now, come. How could, how could your gang sit on those sharp pickets? Ain't you never heard of the dead-end kids? No, oh, yes. <laughs> hey, look, Abbott. Right. There's poor old Mr. Peter Shimino. He's the saddest guy in Patterson. What is he so sad about? Twenty years ago, his wife suddenly left the house, dressed in a nightgown and carrying a coffee pot, and he hasn't seen her since. She left the house suddenly in her nightgown and carrying a coffee pot? Uh, she must have been wacky. She was not. She was cooking breakfast and the stove blew up. <laughs> ah, there you are, Costello. The crowd is waiting for you to appear at the launching platform and christen the new garbage scow. Now, do you know how to perform that ceremony? Sure, Mullenhead. I was the guest of honor last year at the opening of the new dump. Guest of honor at the opening of the new dumps? What did you do? I threw out the first pail. <laughs> I... Look, talk sense, Costello. Let's, let's get up on the launching uh, platform. Professor Mullenhead will introduce you. <laughs> of Patterson, I have the honor to present the man who will launch our new garbage scow, a local boy who has achieved great success. He left this city a dismal illiterate. From an illiterate, he worked his way up to a moron. From a moron, he became a lowly nitwit. From a nitwit, he forged onward to become a nincompoop. Not satisfied, mind you, with being a nincompoop, he struggled upward. Until today... He stands before you, America's number one jerk. <laughs> I give you Lou Costello. Well, Costello, how did you like that speech? Melonhead, your speech would make ice melt. Ice melt? You sure did. I, uh... <laughs> Come on, Costello. The crowd is waiting for you to launch the scow. Here, take this uh, bottle of champagne. 
Oh, hand it to me slow. There you got a stretch. Take it easy now. Thank you. Good. Where's the glasses? No, 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 you dummy. You don't drink it. You break You break the bottle. Oh. That's when you launch the uh, scow. Yeah. Here, the professor will tell you when. Now, look, you watch me, Costello. Now, when I nod my head, you stand close to the garbage scow and you hit it with the bottle. Could I have that again, please? Yes, of course. I'll be very nice and careful. Yeah, will you give it to me slow? I want to understand everything. All right. No more. Are you mistakes. ready? You got the you got the champagne, a very heavy, the big quart of champagne. I got the quart champagne bottle in my hand. All right. You hold it in your right hand. Now, right when I hand. nod my head, you hit it with the bottle. <laughs> Did you hear what I heard? That's right. Okay, Melonhead. But remember, you asked for this. All right. Now I'm going to nod my head. Hit. I can't have it. He came up the wrong way. Get him out of here. Get him out. <laughs> Abbott and Costello will be back for Camel Cigarettes in just a moment. Thanks to the Yanks of the Week. Tonight we salute Army Private Richard Arnold McCurdy of Boise, Idaho. Critically wounded and without medical care, food or water, he lay for three full days and nights under murderous gunfire in Japanese territory, finally making his way back to our own lines. In honor of your miraculous escape, Private McCurdy, the makers of camels are sending to our fighters overseas 500,000 camel cigarettes. Camel Shows honors the Yank of the Week by sending free 500,000 camel cigarettes overseas, a total of a million camels sent free each week. Next week, however, the salute to the Yank of the Week will be made by a most exciting gentleman, new to the American public, but destined, we believe, to become extremely well-known. His name, Stonewall Scott, ex-GI for military intelligence, and now, back in civilian life, a super sleuth. He's the hero of Camel's new, thrill-packed, tense, suspenseful program, Mystery in the air. Come along with Stonewall on his first adventure, this station, this same time. Don't miss it. And now here are evidence of the final. Well, Costello, we're we'll back on the air October 4th for the uh, now for the next three weeks, uh, starting July 30th, of course. We'll uh, be at the Roxy Theater here in New York. Yes. And while we're gone this summer, Camel is bringing you folks a swell program at this same time. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. It's called Mystery in the Air. Bud and I will be listening, and I hope you will be too. Good night, folks. Good night, everybody. Good night, Mother. Good night, Good night, Good night Pop. Good night, Patty and Carol. pipe smoking somehow go together, especially if you can settle by the fire and take it easy. But you want the right kind of fire in your pipe, too. The cooler, slow-burning fire of Prince Albert tobacco. Prince Albert burns slowly because it's crimp cut. A special no-bite treatment takes out the parch and sting, lets you enjoy the rich, mellow flavor of Prince Albert as often as you wish. Do you wonder why Prince Albert is the world's favorite? Try it just once, and you'll know. And be sure on Saturday night to tune in the great Prince Albert radio show, Grand Old Opry, coast to coast on NBC. The 
Abbott and Costello show for Camel Cigarettes will be back at this very same time next week. Don't miss it. This is Ken Niles in Hollywood wishing you all a pleasant. Good night. This is the National Broadcasting Company.